Hello, I'm Chris Menard. In today's video, I'm going to cover year-over-year -year analysis, also called year-over-year -year growth. I'm going to use Microsoft Excel for this, but you don't have to use Excel. I just find it really easy to use Excel. So let's discuss first what is year-over-year -year analysis. Obviously, if I'm comparing one year, the year 2021 versus the year 2020, that would be year-over-year -year analysis. But it's not just years, it's any time period you can compare one year to the other. So this could be quarters, quarter three of one year versus quarter three of another. It could be a certain month. I want to look at the month of November for the current year versus November of the previous year. You could even do weeks or just one day if you wanted to. So what is it you would analyze? Well, if you're doing investments, you might do your stock portfolio or your investment portfolio. If you're a company, maybe you're doing revenue or possibly net income, possibly new customers. It could be a variety of items. If you're a YouTuber, you may do your watch time, your views, or your subscribers. So let's go ahead and get started looking at this. I'm going to go ahead and give you one example first from Microsoft's financials. And then I'm gonna dive into Excel with some data that I made up showing multiple, multiple years and multiple months with revenue. But again, it could be any of those other items that I mentioned. So let me go ahead and pull up Microsoft's financials first. I'm in the year 2021. I'm on Microsoft's website and I'm in quarter two. Just so you know this, Microsoft's Fiscal year, which is the letters FY21, Q2 right there for earnings. Their fiscal year starts on July 1, and it ends on June 30th. So their fiscal year for quarter two, that would be uh, October of 2020 through December 31st of 2020. And look, this came out on January 26th. Quarter ended December 31st, 2020. A lot of information in here, but if you keep reading down here, or if you don't want to read, <laughs> let's just type in year over, and there you go. So they're comparing quarter two of this fiscal year versus quarter two of the previous fiscal year. And just reading from that, something's up 34%. Revenue is, I'm assuming that that's good. So... Now we pop back into Excel and let's actually do some analysis here. Just to show you this, I started here in March 2017 and we went through February 2021 with these revenue numbers. Just to make this official, I'm going to freeze the panes or else that will drive me crazy. There we go. So I want to compare, I'm making this up, I want to compare the quarters first for the year 2020 versus the four quarters for the year 2019. We're going to do this with the pivot table. So click inside your data, insert, pivot table. You know this, is five clicks to make a pivot table. New worksheet sounds good. It picked up my entire range. I will make this file available for you down below in the description. Click OK. All right, so we only had two header rows, the word date and the word revenue. Watch how cool pivot tables are. I've shown this a million times. I've only got months and years. I'm going to drag revenue to the values. So there's the total revenue for all the months and all the years. I'm going to drag date to the rows. Watch what happens when I drop it in the row area. It shows me every year, which is good, and it gives me a grand total, which is okay. It summed up the revenue, which is perfect. But if you notice, there are plus symbols next to each year, and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see this much better. So if I expand, it's 2020 and 2019 that I'm interested in. If I expand 2019, there are my quarters one through four, 2020, quarters one through four, you can expand and collapse. Couple quick tips here. If you want to expand them all, right click a year. There is expand and collapse. And if you look over to the right, it says expand 
entire field. So it did it for every year. Again, I'm going to right click on any year, to expand and collapse, collapse entire field. If you want to do one, obviously I could hit the plus sign, which I find easy, but I could right click 2018 and hit expand, collapse, and then hit expand here. That does just that one. So there you go, a little tip there. So here we go. I only want to do the 2018 and 2019 quarter one. I'm sorry, all quarters. Click here and just do 2019 and 2020. I'm doing a filter. Click OK. There they are, but I want to see the quarters, year, quarter, and date. This is what's so cool about pivot tables in Excel. If you recall from my initial data, all I had was the month and the year. So it grouped them by year and it also grouped them by quarter. That's why you see quarters here. I'm going to put the quarters, drag it up to the columns, and there you go. So I'm comparing, that is year-over-year -year analysis for every quarter for the years 2020 and 2019. If you only wanted to see a certain quarter, you could click here. Let's do Microsoft. Microsoft was only doing, I think, quarter one. I can't recall now, to be honest with you. Quarter one. Another tip, I really don't need this grand total. That is in cell C4. I'm going to right-click on C4 and remove it. And I don't need the grand total down here. Right click and remove it. If you're wondering what percentage increase is that for quarter one for those two years, it is going to be equals cell B6 minus cell B5. That'll be the numeric value divided by the, the earliest year. So that is a 114.6% increase from 2019 quarter one to 2020 quarter one. One of the huge advantages of doing year over year analysis is, as they say, you're comparing apples to apples because if you look, for example, at quarter, if you look at quarter one versus quarter two, and quarter two versus quarter three or quarter three versus quarter four, uh, maybe you have a lot of fluctuations in seasons. Uh, as an example, if you do landscaping, probably the spring and summer are your best months, or if you have a pool supply company. But if you're a retailer, you may be basing everything on the Christmas season or the holiday season. So that's some reasons. Now, if you want to see this monthly, I'm going to do this again from scratch real quick. Before I do it from scratch, let me show you another example from another company. I'm going to pull up Coca-Cola this time. Coca-Cola. So if you do a search for year over year and you don't see it on someone's financial year over, I don't see it, you most likely they've called it same period. Sure enough, whoops, if I can spell period, there you go. So here's Coca-Cola. The first quarter of 2019 were impacted by one less day as compared to the same period. Again, that is year over year analysis in 2018. So they're saying the first quarter of 2019 had one less day. What does that tell you? Because those are not, those are not leap years. That tells me that, that Coca-Cola has fiscal quarters. So January through March, may not be quarter one. It may be January through March 25th or March 26th. They have fiscal quarters. And to prove this, one less day, quarter one, 2019, Coca-Cola, quarter one, March 29th, 2018, quarter one, March 30th. So that is absolutely correct. There was one last day. They're just letting you know it. But that is still year-over-year -year analysis. All right, let me finish this up. This is supposed to be a short video, but this is good stuff, right? One more pivot table from scratch. I'm going to do every month for 2020 versus every month for 2019. So January 2020 versus January 2019. Same steps. Insert, pivot table, new, hit good. Um, we're going to do date, 
I just checked it. I'm going to drag revenue down here. Good again. I'm going to click in here. I'm going to go tell Microsoft Excel on pivot table analyze tab, contextual tab. I'm just going to go take a look at what we're grouping by here. I'm going to go to group selection and it's got everything in there. So that's good. I want to take, I don't want quarters though. So I'm going to lose quarters. So now I've got the year and I've got the month. I dragged quarter back out of here. I'm going to take the years and put them over here. 2017, remember, I'm going to get rid of the grand total first. Let's do this right. And then here's my filter for the years. We only want to see 2019 and 2020. There you go. And I don't need to see that grand total at the bottom either. Again, right click and remove. And then you'd come over here and do your calculations. But you can see... You can see clearly that the 2020 months are all higher than the 2019 months, which in this case is good. So I hope that helps. If you have any questions about year over year analysis, please let me know. In case you're wondering, one last item. If you wanted to compare one month to the previous month, so we had a that is called month to month analysis. So MTM month to month against year over year, which is sometimes Y over Y. And you can see here, well, this isn't a bad one. But you can see here where you could have those fluctuations, seasonal fluctuations. Thank you for your time. Feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you have any questions about this video, put them in the comments. Thank you. Bye-bye.